Great. I'm Stacy Cross, founder of The Comfort Killers. Oh, I do. I know. I know. Every okay. time I say that, it's like, ah. Oh. I have a show on Grand Cardone TV Network. Okay. Yeah, getting uncomfortable is what we talk about. It's a personal development and self-improvement brand. Okay. So what I wanted was two minutes to just ask you about your entire deal sure. here. Can't wait for your uh, speaking engagement. Thank you. We'll definitely be there and learn a lot more about millennials, which is kind of like if you don't introduce it in your business, you're lost, right? Because it's you. the next wave. Absolutely. So you're going to tell us about it and how we could, just very short yep. and brief, how we could start doing some things in our own businesses to maybe attract it and then tell them about what you have here and what you're doing in your business. You got it. Thank you, okay. Chelsea. When are you ready for me? I am oh, Stacey okay, okay. A. Cross and there is no E in my name and I'm right here, right now with Chelsea Cross, and then she's the owner of Millennial Marketing Strategist. Yeah. When did you start this company? You know, I actually started working in the millennial space when I was 16 years old. Wow. So it was a decade ago. Okay. 26 now. Absolutely. I was working in the millennial space before the term millennial was even coined. Right. Before the teenagers. Mm. Also known as the demise of the future. Absolutely. Which I was not really comfortable with or happy about yeah. because I was looking at my friends and my peers and we were hustling, hustling, studying for the SAT, studying for the ACTs, had a list of colleges we were applying to, and right. I was like, I don't see any lazy, right. entitled, narcissistic people. Why are we only being uh, stereotyped yeah. and labeled with all these negative stereotypes? Absolutely. That's not cool. Yeah. And at the time, it was 2007, the programming for this generation was really Hannah Montana and 16 and Friends. Absolutely, yeah, I remember. There was no <laughs> such thing as influencers, social yeah. media was so not what it was, so we didn't have an outlet, we didn't have a platform. Mm. So I, with a yellow spiral notepad, I started to write down topic after topic of what I thought needed to be discussed amongst mm. my peers, amongst my generation, Absolutely. what I wanted to hear from experts across the world about, yeah. and put together a radio talk show treatment, pitch it to Clear Channel Studios mm. here in Palm Beach, Florida, and three months later was our first live on-air show. Wow. And that was truly the catalyst to it all. Yeah. I was 16 years old, our first live show, and by the time I was 18, I started producing for national affiliates like wow. Today Show and the GMAs of the world yeah. about content content pertaining to this generation mm. because we are, we're, uh, you know, back in 2008, that much more misunderstood yeah. and uh, labeled so negatively. Yeah, yeah. And I was on, uh, you know, I am on a mission. Yeah. I've been on a mission to change that word entitled to yeah. entrepreneurial because I believe we are the most entrepreneurial minded generation. Yeah. And if we can empower and instill that fire in us, that's how we're going to see the best of this generation. No, I absolutely agree. I was with my mentor the other day and he said the best, the only only way to know what's happening in the future is to know what happened in the past. So what did we have to do with the baby boomers? What were things that were important to them? And then we created tools and services for them. Mm -hmm. Then Generation X, what did we do? Now it's like, why are we shunning the millennial the population generation. when right. we need to understand them? What are some things that we need to understand about what the millennial want? The reality is, is that the millennial generation, first of all, we're the largest generation on the planet. Absolutely. We're 80 million in the U.S. alone. Yes. We have the largest combined spending power, $200 billion just this year, mm. in 2017. Wow. Which is why every marketer or business needs to, you know, not forget about us. Right. And also, the reality is, is that we are the first generation ever on this planet to actually grow up with the internet. That is true. I Absolutely. am of the last generation. You know, my brother, who's 22 years old, yes. 23 years old, he doesn't even as remember as much as me, I'm 26, of waiting for dial-up internet. AOL. You know, that, uh -huh. that, 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 that Absolutely. Absolutely. I, mean, I remember my mom screaming, get off uh, internet, I want to use the phone. She heard you. You know, it was, <laughs> it was such a process. Yes, yes. So we went from dial-up internet to Snapchat. Mm. I mean, we have the power to do everything in our fingers tips now. So this generation has grown up accustomed to that accessibility, mm. that hi we are hyper-connected, mm. we are digital native, yes. we think digital before we ever think traditional. Wow, so that important. is infusing so much of the mentality and the mindset of this generation, which
which is why it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone mm. that you need to think digital, you need to think mobile, and you need to think social mm. if you want to market to this generation. Wow. And how does your company play a part in that role? So the beautiful thing and the exciting thing is that over the past 10 years, it's truly been an evolution yes. as everybody's career journey is. Yes. But I really, truly started in radio, worked my way into TV. I was really more of a media personality yeah. for the, the beginning of my career yes. until 2009 when I got tapped to be one of the first ever millennial spokespeople in America on behalf of Kotex. Mm. They were launching a new division for the younger generation mm -hmm. called You by Kotex. Yeah. And I was a part of the entire making of the product, messaging of the product, and PR of, of the, the product. product. So every aspect of it, and, and also the rep you know, a face that was Yeah, yeah, sure thing. And speaking to inner city students, yeah. going, uh, traveling across the country, speaking yeah. on behalf of feminine hygiene care. And I realized that Kotex had tapped me because I had a community. Of course. I had a digital community. Of course. I had a platform. Yes. I had a voice. Yes. I had influence. Yes. And I had an influence with like-minded individuals yes. within my generation. So Kotex was tapping me to tap my target market. Right. So that's when I realized that I was the bridge. I was the bridge between my community, right. my tribe. That we can't talk that, to, right? right? And the corporate world. Right. And how to basically bring them together. Right. So that they cohesively work with mm. each other. And when that happened, it was like boom. Light bulb. And it's been a rocket ship ever of since. Of course. And it's been amazing because with social media, I've been able to evolve what I'm able to provide for clients. Mm. Like my weekly Twitter chat services. Like when we did a live Facebook live stream. Yes. Lab hangouts. I mean, right. They're all digital activations. You're speaking digitally. That yeah. I could use, utilize my community. Absolutely. And educate my community. Absolutely. And be, bring the experience into the digital landscape on behalf of the brand. Mastercard, IBM, Intel, Suave, Vitamin. I, I mean, you it. name it. They're you know that much more aware of how we operate, how we engage, how we're influenced. Mm. And I realized that I had a bridge of a platform, <laughs> and that was really the. That was the, the additional catalyst. Like, right, when you think of your career, there's always benchmarks that take you to the next level. Right. So radio show was definitely the foundation, but then Kotex was that catalyst. Right. And when I figured out that aha moment of With bringing the community. it all together, yep. that was, and I've never stopped. Well, you know what? <laughs> what? Well, first of all, 16 years old, there's some, you had to get way uncomfortable. The other kids were probably like, okay, I understand. They're talking about millennials. That's great. Whatever. Not my cup of tea. But you took action. You took major action throughout your career up till now to build your company, and you're not stopping. And let me tell you, talking about uncomfortable, yeah. if I let the uncomfort t get the best of yes. me, when I was 16 years old, how much confidence and self-awareness? That's what I'm saying. You're yeah. like so intimidating. Right. And every, everything's about how you, how everybody else thinks about right. it. You know, it's that time frame. I was so severely bullied mm. by some of my best friends. Wow. Who do you think you are that you're they're launching a radio show? That was what some of my best friends' reaction was wow. when I told them about Teen Talk Live. Not like, oh my yeah, God, I'm we're happy for awesome. you. What can we do? You know, I wanted to bring all of my people. Every every show had a panel of teenagers, so of course the initial panels were all my friends. Right. So, nope, who do you think you are? Bullied me, shunned That's me. That's crazy. Um, start, you know, kind of like negative propaganda yeah. about Teen Talk Live. Wow. And if I let that get the best of me, I might have never launched Teen Talk Live. Who knows what I would be doing right, right now. Right, So, stepping outside your comfort zone or feeling uncomfortable mm. is also a message of maybe you're on to something that's threatening others because they it. want that idea for themselves. I absolutely love so, it. So it's okay to feel uncomfortable. Yes. To tell you, I'm speaking at, you know, in a few hours today. I'm so excited, but I'm also so nervous. I'm like sweating right now. You know, the things that are exciting, yes. and the things that we know are about to be a rocket ship yes. for us, or, yes. those are supposed to make you a little right. uncomfortable. Because if you felt comfortable, you weren't pushing yourself enough. You have just explained what my company is. is and, I, and, I, and I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like this too, I, I'm so because I've been planned. breaking comfort all 
day. To get this documentary out, I had to step outside my comfort zone, come over here, learn about you, learn about what you're doing. And I appreciate you bringing that message of, first of all, changing what we're thinking and labeling about millennial. Maybe we should, we should encourage millennials, speak to them in the way you said, digitally, socially and what mobily. was and mobily yeah so thank you so much thank you. for giving that message to my thank audience you. Thank we you. appreciate it thank so much you. just give a shout out at uh, millennial marketing strategist i can't wait yeah. to hear you speak later and yes you thank are you. sweaty I so glammy. <laughs> and you know what i mean it's uh, we have such an engaged amazing community yes. chelseacross.com you can find it all yes. but you know what the reality is and because we're here at 10x today yes. it's all about growth it's all about scale it's Absolutely. all about going to the next level yes but look if you're looking to appeal to the millennial market because ultimately you have to have consumers to make you money. Mm -hmm. You have to understand or take the time to understand the mindset of this generation to ultimately retain them as your employees mm. and also market to them effectively. That is, that's powerful. And so that's you heard why it. why it's millennial mindset Mark marketing, millennial marketing strategy. It's all about that 360 approach. Yes. Understanding your target consumer, Works. implementing the right strategy, yes. and boom, making it work. I love you. Thank you so Thank much you. Again. Thank you. I am Stacy A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. Until next time, comfort killers. I Thank you that. so much. There's That's no awesome. Yeah, there's somebody in my name. How do you spell your last name? Uh, cross. I know. She has me C-R-O-S-S. Yeah. <laughs> That's what everybody thinks our last yeah. name Yeah. Really? Or when you say it, you have to You have to be like... I know. Cross with a K. Okay. Okay. That's, that's good. I understand. And I love that you're like... There's a family thing here. It really is. Yeah. And it's been from the very beginning. It should. Too. It should. And what did you what did you have to do? Stand sweating. The children she couldn't stand the kids were bullying. That's them. what I want. Yeah. And she said we need to do something, Mom. We need to get out there. We need to promote good kids. Yeah. And feel like it's a place for kids to talk to each other. Right. She goes, I want a radio show. She was in radio and TV. Sixteen years old. I was like, okay, I'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll figure out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Like you really stepped out. It took me almost uh, double your age at sixteen to figure out how to get uncomfortable and actually take action. So I applaud you. I commend you, you for what you did. Thank and you. That's awesome. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samantha. 2:30 today. 2:30. I'll be there. I'll be in.